We make our YouTube debut here on Locked on Ravens as we dive into bold predictions and more for the 2021 season. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And we return here with another episode of Locked on Ravens. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire. And we return here with a new era of Locked on Ravens as we dive into YouTube here, our first YouTube episode. This is it right here. So this is what I look like if you are following along on YouTube. If you're following along on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the content is the exact same. The only difference is that you can't actually see my face. And so... For today, we are going to be diving into a bunch of different things that are Ravens related. Of course, just kind of getting ready for the 2021 season as the Ravens finally, finally have just one week to go until regular season football where they play the Las Vegas Raiders on Monday night. So that is very exciting. So I do want to just get into what to expect for this season and then also diving into some bold predictions. I think it's Really important to get into some bold predictions because, yes, while they might not come true, they're fun to think about, fun to talk about. So we're going to dive into all of that here today. So we'll do three offensive predictions in the second segment. And finally, we'll do three defensive predictions in the final segment. And as this YouTube journey begins, you know, this is not the final product by any means, right? This is a growing and learning experience. If you were here with me for my first ever audio episode, is it different from what the audio is now? So the background, you know, we're going with kind of a beachy theme here. We're keeping it with the positive vibes here on Locked On Ravens. So we'll dive into everything Ravens related while just doing it on both video and audio. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. I'd appreciate it. It definitely helps out the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you want to follow along audio wise, be sure to follow us anywhere. There's a podcast, so Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere there's a podcast. We are there waiting. Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Eastern time. And also be sure to follow us on Twitter at ChaosSugar34 is my personal account and at LockedOnRavens is the show account. So with all that being said, we are going to dive right into our Ravens content here, our first ever YouTube episode. Of course, starting off with just what to expect for the Ravens during this 2021 season. Of course, one of the big storylines and arguably one of the biggest storylines, if not the biggest, is the injuries. So far, the Ravens have had quite a bit of injuries, whether that be season enders to J.K. Dobbins and L.J. Fort, whether it be more on the medium end, like a Jimmy Smith or some of those guys, Rashad Bateman, or just really nagging ones like Marquise Brown, Miles Boykin, Deion Kane, who's not with the team anymore. Injuries are a part of football. Any given play, there is slated to be any injury possible. There could be anything happening, whether it's a minor one, a major one. So that the Ravens have had so many injuries, it's a bit surprising, and it seems like it's been like every single day there's been an injury or some guy gets carted off the field. Now, I know it hasn't actually been like that, but it kind of feels that way, right? So hopefully the Ravens' injury luck is going to come now where they won't have a ton of injuries and they'll be able to kind of go through the season pretty smoothly. Hopefully that's the case. Another big storyline is obviously year four for Lamar Jackson. Jackson is coming off of what some classify as a down year. And look, yes, according to actually his his performance during his MVP season, it's a little bit of a difference, right? The MVP season, he earned the second unanimous MVP in league history 2020. I didn't expect a statistical upgrade from him. I expected a bit of a regression, and that's exactly what happened. But his efficiency went up in certain areas, and I think that's where you have to kind of give it a bit – give Lamar Jackson a bit of slack, right, because he still performed very well. There was definitely a struggle towards the middle of the season – But then you get to the end of the year, Baltimore finds their identity. Jackson is clicking on all cylinders. The offense is clicking on all cylinders. So we'll be able to see just exactly what the Ravens and Lamar Jackson will be able to do in 2021. And I expect it to be a lot better on offense. And not that you can get much better because the Ravens offense is rushing. Historically, that rushing offense is the best. So you look at it that way. But another big storyline is the defense and the pass rush with Matthew Judon, Yannick Ngakwe, Jihad Ward, all gone. They're all in di- on different teams right now. So what do the Ravens do? 
not a ton at first. They didn't do a ton, and I think it was kind of a concern for a lot of people. But they end up bringing in Justin Houston. They bring back Tyus Bowser. They drafted off a OA and Dalen Hayes. So, you know, they have the guys there. Penel McPhee also brought back. And obviously, Jalen Ferguson is someone who I think could have a very big season. The Ravens as a team last year didn't have a ton of sacks. They, they were more of a pressure team than an actual sack team. They ended up not doing – the. It was it was inconsistent, I'll say, right? They had a bunch of sacks, and then they went out and – almost for one game would have like four, five, six. And then the, the, the next three games, it would be one sack, no sacks, no sacks, two sacks. So hopefully they'll be able to be a bit more consistent in that area. But with Justin Houston on the team, I think that he gives them that boost and the edge rusher group. I think a lot of people viewed it as one of the, one of the worst positions on the team on a very deep roster, I have to say, and the Ravens went out there. I, I was talking about Justin Houston for, I don't know how long, but the Ravens ended up doing a lot of good things and just signing Justin Houston, which I think was a great signing for the team. He has 97 and a half career sacks. And that's something when you bring into any NFL organization, you're going to have a great time with it. You know, Justin Houston, his production was expected to fall off right after he signed with Indianapolis. It would have been, it would have been pretty realistic if that had happened, but Justin Houston defied the odds and ended up having, I believe it was 19 sacks in two seasons with the Colts, 19 total sacks in two, to, to, two total seasons. So looking at it that way, Justin Houston's a phenomenal addition. The secondary still has their guys in Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, Jimmy Smith, Tavon Young is now back. Deshaun Elliott's expected to take a big year jump or year to starter jump. You know, it's not a second year in the NFL, but it's his second full year as a starter after having a pretty injury plagued couple seasons. It's now his year for part of that really phenomenal 2018 draft class. And then also the defensive line. I think a healthy year from Clay's Campbell will be very important. A healthy year from Brandon Williams, from Derek Wolf. All those guys hopefully being healthy. Derek Wolf right now is a bit of an iffy guy right now in terms of health because it seems like he has a back injury and his status for week one is not that well known yet. We don't really know. So those guys and obviously my breakout candidate for the 2021 season for Baltimore is defensive tackle Justin Matabike. So there are a bunch of exciting storylines. And obviously I think another big one if we move back to offense is Rashad Bateman and just how he will impact the Ravens offense. Now, obviously he's not going to be on the field for at least the first three weeks of the regular season due to his injury that he suffered. He's going to be on injured reserve. He's already put on there by the way, but so that's going to cause guys like Marquise Brown, Sammy Watkins, maybe James Prochet and Tylen Wallace get some run as, as well because Miles Boykin is also on injured reserve. And obviously Devin Duvernay is someone who can be a really big weapon for them. So the whole passing offense in general is a really big storyline for this team because we know what the rushing offense can do. But in terms of how the Ravens can complement that with the pass game, it's really difficult to win a Super Bowl at the NFL level if you're just just running the football at, at a very high level. Now, the Ravens certainly do that, and it's not like their passing offense is this terrible, horrible thing. They did a good job throwing last year, but it's definitely not anywhere near. It wasn't anywhere near what the Ravens needed to do from a passing perspective to, I think, take that next step. And the Ravens, I think, understood that. And they knew that what they had was not really getting it done. They let Willie Sneed walk. They brought in Sammy Watkins, drafting Rashad Bateman, you know, and even in years past, right, we've seen Seth Roberts and we've seen Jeremy Macklin and we've seen Michael Crabtree. It's been all these different receivers who the Ravens try to bring in for that veteran stopgap. And look, the veterans have worked before. We've seen Steve Smith Sr. come in. We've seen Anquan Bolton, Derek Mason. Those are the types of signings that the Ravens would like to have. And hopefully if Sammy Watkins can stay healthy, that's another person who can help them out in that regard. And I think the last storyline I'll touch on here is obviously the offensive line. The offensive line is a big part of what the Ravens do because, one, rushing the football, you have to have those holes open up. On the defensive front, those offensive linemen have to get to the second level, be mobile enough to pull in this offense. And two, for pass protection, I mean, if we go back to that Buffalo game, the Ravens' offense was was not doing that well because the offensive line was just not blocking well. There was a guy in the offensive backfield every two seconds. Lamar Jackson didn't have time to throw. The running backs didn't have time 
to go out there and actually get to the second level because they were getting stopped at the first level or even behind the line of scrimmage. So the Ravens brought in Kevin Zeitler. They bring in Alejandro Villanueva. They draft Ben Cleveland. Jawan James is potentially waiting in the wings. And they also have Bradley Bozeman moving over from guard to center. Ronnie Stanley, the big piece, also returning. So that consistency will have to be worked up to. That's why I think the offense might start off a tad slower than anticipated because the wide receivers have not had time with Lamar Jackson, like Sammy Watkins and, and Marquise Brown and obviously Rashad Bateman. The offensive line has dealt with some injuries including to Ronnie Stanley, who's coming back from his. He looks healthy now, but he wasn't on the field at first. Kevin Zeitler was going through something. We saw Bradley Bozeman leave and come back. The left guard competition, I think that's Ben Powers' job right now, but still. So you're looking at those guys. When they get the chemistry together, when they're on the football field together for a good amount of time in game situations, they just haven't had that yet. So, you know, once we hit week three, week four, week five, I think we'll see that offensive line unit at its best. But I wouldn't be totally shocked if they ended up struggling and in, in just a little bit, a little tiny bit at first for them. But we do have a lot to talk about in terms of bold predictions. So when we get back here, we are going to be talking about three offensive bold predictions for the Baltimore Ravens. But Football season is back. Let's make the most of it with a better way to create your customer pool at runyourpool.com, the premier sports pool hosting service. Run Your Pool makes it ridiculously easy to run a football pool with friends, family, or office mates. They offer dozens of formats, including Survivor Pick'em, Squares, Margin, Confidence Pools, 33, and more. Run Your Pool hosts formats for NFL and college football with one-week games, full season playoffs, or the Super Bowl. Unlike other fantasy sports platforms, Run Your Pool has options and settings to make it your own. You can even brand your pool for your local business bar or restaurant. Reconnect with friends and join nearly 2 million football fans to make every game action-packed this season. Check them out today and get $10 off of runyourpool.com slash locked on or use our promo code locked on at checkout. Anywhere, everywhere in the world, Run Your Pool helps friends and colleagues compete. The NFL season starts September 9th. Start today at runyourpool.com slash locked on and have your pool up and running in minutes. Runyourpool.com slash locked on. And it's that time of year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including online's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest two hundred thousand dollar NFL Survivor contest. Open now at Bet Online. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. To receive your 100% welcome bonus, be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo. Make a bet on the Thursday, September 9th opener between the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your wager will be refunded up to $25 for new customers only when signing up and using promo code NFL100. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, from football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all the great offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online, your online sports book experts. And we are back here with our second segment of this Monday edition of Locked On Ravens, the first YouTube edition here of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Ostriker, your host, still hanging out with you here. Of course, a whole new experience for me doing video for the first time, whereas I've been doing audio for over two years. So it's something that, you know, we'll, we'll get through here. It'll be, it's not a finished product right now, obviously. We'll get into it. But what is a finished product now, or at least very close to what is the Baltimore Ravens final roster? Obviously, there's still a bit of shuffling to do. And there's also a bit of shuffling to do with the practice squad. As the Ravens, they don't have a running back yet at the time of this recording. I would anticipate that changing very quickly, maybe as soon as today. But getting into three bold predictions here on the offensive side of the ball, bold predictions are always fun for me to do because it's getting out there and kind of taking something that can become a reality and kind of taking it to the next level. Because while something isn't really likely at times to happen as a bold prediction, hey, sometimes it does come true. So the first bold prediction, again, we'll talk about three offensive bold predictions here in the second segment. And then finally, we'll talk about three defensive ones in the final segment. The first one, and we're going to start off with Lamar Jackson, who obviously is very big in terms of the success of Baltimore's offense. And I'm going to say that Lamar Jackson finishes at least in the top three for MVP voting in 2021. And you might be sitting there and thinking, how could this be possible, right? Well, there's a lot of reasons why it could be possible. Jackson is someone who did have that statistical regression back a bit 
in 2020, but people called it a down year, like he was a bust or something where he didn't perform well at all. And where he just, he just was a terrible quarterback for 16 weeks of the season, which just is not true whatsoever. So looking at Jackson's stats for the 2020 season, he completed 242 passes out of 376 attempts. He had 2,757 yards passing in he had 26 touchdowns through the air and nine interceptions. And then running the football, he was the Ravens' leader in attempts, yards, but not touchdowns. He had 159 attempts for 1,005 yards and seven scores. So he was someone who could have gone a bit better, right? The, the stats could have been a bit better, especially throwing the football. And I think everybody points to the nine interceptions and the low-ish completion percentage. It was hovering right around 64.4%. And they're, and they're looking at that and they're saying, well, why wasn't he throwing for 4,000 yards or 5,000 yards? Why wasn't he throwing for 35 passing touchdowns? Look, that's just not what the Ravens offense is, right? You look at it that way. Lamar Jackson is not throwing for that many yards. He's not passing for that many touchdowns, but he's also shown that he can do it, right? He's been out there and he's won that MVP. He's had 43 total touchdowns in a season. He's done a bunch of stuff throwing the football and the efficiencies. The efficiencies are what I look at. I don't really care as much about the passing yards and the passing touchdowns because I think it is a product of an offense. Because if you put Lamar Jackson in a Kansas City Chiefs offense or a Pittsburgh Steelers offense where they're throwing the football at a very high clip, much more than what the Ravens do, Lamar Jackson's passing numbers are obviously going up and what's happening, his rushing stats are going down. So as long as Lamar Jackson picks up the yardage, gets into the end zone, you can do all that, doing it efficiently. I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't really care how it happens as long as it happens, right? So Lamar Jackson, red zone efficiency, very good. He's good off of play action. He's actually good in the pocket, right? Contrary to popular belief, Lamar Jackson is good in the pocket. So it's all these narratives, all these stereotypes that just are tired and they're not they're not good anymore. So when you look to the 2021 season, the Ravens have surrounded Lamar Jackson with the talent necessary that he needs. It's, it's not fully there yet. There could still be a true wide receiver one or maybe a bit better of an offensive line. But the Ravens took the steps to get him what he needed for the most part. And because of that, with weapons like Rashad Bateman and Sammy Watkins coming in, still with Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews, you're expecting him to, I think, continue to evolve his own game while also having better weapons around him. That to me is a better formula for success. Now that he's entering his fourth year, he's now been around the block a couple of times, right? He now understands what it takes to win at the NFL level. He now actually understands what it takes to lose at the NFL level. He's gone through the ups. He's gone through the downs. He's hungry. He's motivated. And I think with everything that it's, it's just setting up to be right now, I think the Ravens definitely have a shot to put Lamar Jackson in that situation to be a top three MVP candidate. And I think Lamar Jackson has that power in him too, right? He has to do it himself. He, he can't just be relying on others. And sometimes he will, you know, a third and seven, something breaks down. He'll be like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to do it myself. And he's going to run. He's going to get that first down. He'll run out of the pocket, throw it to somebody who gets open. It's those kinds of plays that makes Lamar Jackson such an electrifying guy on the offensive side of the ball, one of the best polarizing guys in the entire NFL. But for the second bull prediction here, and we're going to go, we're going to go really bold here. I'm going to say the Ravens have two 1,000 yard receivers. And this one I think is actually kind of less likely to happen than Lamar Jackson winning the MVP. But when you look at it, the Ravens, again, the weapons are now there. Lamar Jackson, I think the offense in general is going to be more of a passing offense. And I'm not saying they're going to throw it 50 times or pass the ball more than they run it, but they do have a lot of different ways they can exploit defenses now because before defenses were honing in on Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews. We had the conversation during the season last year on Locked On Ravens where it was, which guy our defense is going to focus on this week? Is it going to be Mark Andrews? Is it going to be Marquise Brown? And every week we came back after the game and said, well, the defense focused here and Mark Andrews had a big game, but Marquise Brown didn't. Or Marquise Brown had a big game, but Mark Andrews didn't. Now there, there's a bunch more pick your poison type scenarios where defenses have to defend on a fully healthy offense against Rashad Bateman, Sammy Watkins, Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews, and all those types of guys. So the Ravens right now have a bunch of different formulas for success throwing the football, not to mention the actual improvement of Jackson as a thrower. And the Ravens offense is going to be still run heavy. I don't think that is changing and they, they shouldn't change it because their identity is a running football team and they have found success with throwing the foot or with running the football that way. 
So when looking at the Ravens, I think that you have Marquise Brown in his year three. A lot of people are expecting that breakout from him in a full 17-game season, and that's another thing. One game is being added on here. So the stats for a 1,000-yard receiver, they can kind of be split up a bit differently than in a 16-game season. So the Ravens will have more opportunities to get those guys to 1,000 yards. If there were two who I think were the most likely guys to do it, I would probably say Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews. Just because the chemistry is already there, they're also probably going to be the beneficiaries of the passing offense being a bit more voluminous this year. Is that a word? I don't know. But I do think that with the amount of volume that the passing offense will do this year or see this year, the Ravens will be able to put guys in situations to have career high receiving totals. But again, for me, it's about efficiency. What are the yards per catch? What's the red zone? What's their usage in the red zone? It's those types of stats. But as long as they're scoring in the in the red zone, as long as they're scoring, catching the football, I'm totally okay with it. So that'll be the second bold prediction from me. We've gone with Lamar Jackson finishes at least top three in the MVP voting. The Ravens having two 1,000-yard receivers. And then finally here, let's get into this third and final offensive bowl prediction, and that is the Ravens will only make one offensive line change for the entire 2021 season, the entire season. And honestly, this is this was a tough one for me to come up with and kind of go with because I think I'm seeing like shades of 2020 a little bit. I'm getting flashbacks of the Ravens going through combination after combination after combination and just seeing the center position being switched so many times, right guard, right tackle, left tackle. The only consistent position, the only consistent player was Bradley Bozeman on that line who played left guard, and he was the guy who was kind of the staple on that line for 2020. But with a clean bill of health now, with Ronnie Stanley fully recovered, with the Ravens having guys who I think can be durable, now you never know with injuries, right? Injuries can happen any given play, any given day, practice, preseason games. We've seen that with J.K. Dobbins and L.J. Fort and all the injuries Baltimore has suffered. But this year just seems a bit different. And honestly, for the offensive line, it seems like a year that's going to be much improved. The Ravens, after that Buffalo game, definitely saw – this team and what it was saw the offensive line and said, look, we need to change what this offensive line is and how it protects Lamar Jackson, how it opens up holes in the run game. And that to me is very important. So I think that the only change the Ravens will make, and this might not even happen if, if the guy's playing well, but if Ben Power struggles, I think Ben Cleveland comes in and plays left guard for a little bit. And then from there, it's smooth sailing. Again, not saying Ben Powers wouldn't do well, but in the event that he didn't do well or in you know the event that he struggles, gets injured or whatnot, that would be the one change I anticipate. Now, Powers, after a pretty brutal opening preseason game, came back and really performed well against Carolina and against Washington. So he, to me, went from off the roster to into a starting spot. And he has earned that spot for sure. Ben Cleveland just didn't play enough. Tyree Phillips didn't really play enough. And I think they view him more as a right tackle option if one of the tackles were to go down. So I'm totally fine with the Ravens going with Ben Powers right now and just seeing how it works out because they have a lot of options right now, depth wise. Now the tackle depth, I don't think is where it needs to be. So hopefully Ronnie Stanley can stay healthy, but he has not played a full season in his NFL career. So we might see another change, but that's why it's bold, right? Because I'm anticipating Ronnie Stanley plays a full 17 game season. So to recap these bold predictions for offense, Lamar Jackson finishes top three in MVP voting. We have the Ravens with two 1000 yard receivers. And we also have the offensive line making just one singular change throughout the 2021 season. And we're not done with these bold predictions. We're going to dive into defensive bold predictions. So stay tuned for that. But before we do that, does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live. Another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. And you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV in on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again, and the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required content varies by package. 
And Built Bar is the best protein bar ever. What's your favorite Built Bar flavor? Did you know that Built Bar has nine delicious flavors, including coconut, cherry, mint brownie, double chocolate, and salted caramel? Not only are Built Bar flavors the best tasting, but they're healthy too. Order today and get that raspberry or mint brownie or whatever you like. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off of your first order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. And we are back with our final segment of this first ever YouTube edition of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Ostriker is still here with you. And we just got into our three offensive bull predictions. I thought I thought they were pretty bold. But now we're going to dive into the defensive side of the ball. A unit that, honestly, I think has the potential to at least finish as a top five unit. And they have been an elite unit for the last couple of seasons. I don't really anticipate that changing but my first bold prediction, I do want to talk about sacks a little bit. We did talk about sacks in the first segment. My bold prediction is that Tyus Bowser will lead the Ravens in sacks in 2021. And you might be thinking, what are you thinking <laughs> by saying this? And it's true. You know, we're, we're going bold here. I want to go actually bold and not say, oh, well, Justin Houston will lead the team in sacks. Right? That's not so bold. We want to go bold here. So Tyus Bowser is someone who is definitely going to get an increased amount of opportunities with the departures of Matthew Judon, Yannick Ngakwe, and Jihad Ward. There's, there's, there's no doubt about it. The Ravens, though, that's 12 sacks that they lost. So someone's going to have to make those up. The big addition, obviously, is Houston. But I do think that Bowser is going to get a lot more opportunities just to rush the passer. A lot of people view him and they say, well, he's going to be dropping back into coverage and he's not going to be pass rushing a lot. But honestly, that's, that's not the case, I don't think. Bowser will be dropping back into coverage. Don't get me wrong. But when looking at the Ravens and just how they distributed their sack totals last season, Matthew Judon led this team with six, Clays Campbell had four. Then you have Jihad Ward, Yannick Ngakwe, Patrick Queen, and Pernell McPhee all with three. Bowser was down there a little bit. He had two sacks, and, and that's not the best production ever, right, from a sack perspective. And when I'm talking about leading the Ravens in sacks, that's no joke, right? The Ravens are going to have to do a lot with Tyus Bowser if they want to get him into good opportunities. And this is actually the same thing with all the pass rushers, whether they are outside linebackers or not. Adafe Owe, Justin Houston himself. You look at all those guys, they have to do a lot in order to get to the quarterback and the Ravens have to put them into situations like that. Now, why Bowser is such a bold prediction is that he is not going to be used in a pure pass rushing role like Justin Houston will be. And honestly, he is probably the one who will be used in that way the most, maybe Pernell McPhee, but I think Adafi Owe is going to be dropping back into coverage and used in that role a bit. Ties Bowser and even Dalen Hayes to an extent. So the Ravens have a bunch of different ways that they can utilize Bowser. So that's why I think this is such a bold prediction, but Bowser has been on that kind of career arc that I think is now his time to break out in a true sense. And what I mean by that is we, I've talked about the Ty's Bowser arc before here on Locked On Ravens, where Bowser didn't have a great first two seasons in the NFL. He kind of started to put it together in year three, and then year four was his his mini breakout. But I think a lot of people look at the sack numbers and they say, well, he's not that good of a player. But again, it goes beyond the box score, beyond sacks. Outside linebackers can do more than just rush the passer in today's NFL. But Bowser, I could see him getting nine sacks or 10 sacks, even 11 here. And that is very, very bold. I, I am very aware that that is a bold prediction by me, but we want to make it bold. So Bowser, to me, I think we'll be put in a lot more pass rushing situations than people anticipate right now. And I think that's a good thing because he has the talent to do so. He's been practicing and, and we know how competitive this whole Ravens team is. And I think Justin Houston coming in there just makes it better for these young outside linebackers to learn from him and his 97 and a half career sacks. So yeah, I th I'm going with Tyus Bowser leads the Ravens in sacks for my first, I'll call it a very, very bold prediction. Moving on to the second bold prediction for this Baltimore Ravens team on defense. We're going to go with another very bold prediction and say that Patrick Queen is at least in the top five for defensive player of the year honors. And this is, again, a very bold one. We're, we're just going bold, bold, bold here on Locked On Ravens because Patrick Queen, very up and down rookie season, right? He did lead the team in tackles, but we saw the issues in coverage. We saw the issues, I think, a bit just with his confidence in terms of where he needed to be or where he thought that 
he needed to be at times over pursuing plays. He is a he's a he's a ball of energy, right? He goes sideline to sideline like no other. Very good sideline to sideline speed. Good awareness, good recognition, but also sometimes he he didn't do a good job with that because he didn't have a preseason, didn't have a full training camp in 2020. So for me, I think Patrick Queen is someone who was in line for a big year two boost. And what better thing to compare it against or compare it to than what he did in week one against New Orleans Saints? And in, in the preseason, in the 2021 preseason, that was, I think, some of what is to come with Patrick Queen. Queen, I think, has improved on his confidence, improved his recognition. He sometimes will get washed out because of he, he's a bit undersized and that th- there's nothing you can do about that for the most part. Now, Queen works around it, right? Size does not make a player. And I don't think that that is anything that he needs to be worried about. But sometimes the size can be a tiny bit of an issue, especially when it gets washed out by bigger linemen or bigger blockers. But he's able to work over sometimes. He's a good blitzer. He's able to produce good hit power. And I think, again, the the two plays I'm going to refer to are from that week one game against the New Orleans Saints in the preseason where Queen sniffs out a screen, right? He recognizes it, gets out into the flat and stops that screen in its tracks. And then the next play on a blitz ends up sacking Taysom Hill with that recognition where he just charges Taysom Hill and gets that sack. So to me, those are all plays or those are both plays where Queen has shown his growth and his improvement. Queen has talked about it during press conferences, during interviews where he's like, Oh yeah, I feel I feel more confident. And he's he said before it took him about five weeks to get into full game shape. So I do think that Queen is in for a big year two. Now I know projecting him in the top five at defensive player of the year is a big bold prediction. And I understand that it might not come to fruition. But again, maybe none of these bold predictions come to fruition. That's just what bold predictions are. And then moving on to our final bold prediction here for the Baltimore Ravens on the defensive side of the ball. I'm going to go with Deshaun Elliott leads the Ravens in interceptions this year. And I think Deshaun Elliott has kind of lost his reputation as a ball hawk, which is honestly kind of, I don't know, it's kind of sad because you look at what he did at the University of Texas. He was a ball hawk there. Great recognition, high football IQ, always in the right spot at the right time, covers a lot of ground there on that tape. You know, you look at his tape, you look at the highlights, it's all there for him for to be a ball hawk. But it's kind of the same situation Patrick Queen was in last year, although a little bit different. Deshaun Elliott, obviously the Earl Thomas situation. We all know what the Earl Thomas situation was. He is thrust into a role where he is not familiar playing free safety. You know, that's not something he was anticipated that he would be doing in his first full season as an NFL starter, which Deshaun Elliott was not expected to start in 2020. The Earl Thomas thing happens. Thomas gets released. I think it was about two weeks, three weeks before the regular season. And he ends up playing really well. I think gaining confidence which with each game that he played in. And that's really big for him because now he has that full season under his belt, but did not register an interception in 2020. And there were, there were times, I I believe it was on the Ravens mic'd up in week 14, that Lamar Jackson comeback game where he came back in after the cramps and Marcus Peters was mic'd up for that game. And Marcus Peters ended up, I think there was a play where Deshaun Elliott didn't trust his instincts or something, which for a first year starter is Honestly, I think a bit common. And Marcus Peters goes over to him and says, hey, man, just trust your instincts, right? Just go out there and make a play. You know, that's not exactly what he said, but it was around that. And now that I think Elliot has that experience, he has the veterans in his ear. He's, I think, found the confidence in himself now that he has that full season. I think he'll go out there and play a lot more aggressively, but smartly. There's one thing between playing aggressively and just going out there blindly and not really understanding what's happening. And then there's also going out there and playing aggressively while also doing it smartly. And I think Elliott's going to do the latter of those two things. So I think Deshaun Elliott will lead this team in interceptions. And that is bold because one, he had no interceptions during 2020 as a full year starter there. And two, there are guys like Marcus Peters on this team. There are guys like Tavon Young and, and Jimmy Smith. And of course, Marlon Humphrey, this is a loaded secondary that, I mean, I think a lot of guys could lead the team in interceptions, but I'm going to go with Marlon Humphrey and, make it, or excuse me, Deshaun Elliott, and make it so that the Ravens have that guy. But also, Deshaun Elliott is not going to be just the only one to get interceptions for this team because there is Peters, there is Young, and all those other players. So the Ravens have an elite secondary, and I think Deshaun Elliott is going to be a very, very big part of that secondary. But 
That's all that I have for you here today on Locked on Ravens. That's our first YouTube episode. We're going to continue to grind away with these. Obviously, you know, the, the setup here might change a bit. This is just the first episode. So I know that everything's not the way it is right now. It, it's not perfect right now, but we're going to get to as close to perfect as we can here on this show. And I'm excited to continue to dive into it again. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we're putting out our content here Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Eastern time. It will be up. So be sure to stay tuned for all of that. And when we get back here tomorrow, we'll be diving into more Ravens talk as the Ravens gear up to take on the Las Vegas Raiders in week one. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you tomorrow.